You who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. Look to. Today is a day of remembrance. And as we remember those who, who fought for our nation, fought for our freedom, and those who gave their lives for us, we celebrate Memorial Day. It's a day of remembrance, remembering those who've fallen in service to, to procure our freedom, and also a day of just remembering those who passed on before us. Tomorrow will be a day that many will go out to, to the cemeteries and, and look after the graves and just do some time together with family. But also this time we want to remember, especially remember what Jesus Christ did for us. He went to the cross, he gave his life for the service for each and every one of us that we may have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Praise God, let's pray. Father, this morning, we thank you for your, your goodness, your mercies, your grace. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you have in store for us this morning. Lord, with, with great anticipation, we are looking forward to what you are going to do this morning in this place, in this house. And Lord, we'll give thanks and give praise to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. This morning, we're going to do something a little different. This goes back to some pre-COVID times. We're going to take time to greet one another if you're comfortable with that. You know, if, if, if you're still not real comfortable with this, you know, kind of wave at people around there. But but if you want to take just a few moments to, to go around in the congregation and, and, and greet one another, and then when when, when it's all done, Jesse's with the worship team is going to come up, and when they start playing, you know it's time to find your seat, okay? All right. I, I think you can remember how to do this, can't you? Good. So... Go ahead and find your way back to your seats. Yeah, there's a love 
that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness get your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my
You're our hope. Yes, you are. You're our hope. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Thank you, Jesus. You're our hope. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're our hope. So come in me, me here with your presence, God. Come and show me who you are. Come and meet me here. You are all I want. There is no one like you, God. Sing that again. Come and meet me. Come and meet me here with your presence, God. And come and show me who you are, who you are. Come and meet me here. You are all I want. There's no one like you, God. Yes, I'm waiting on you, God. I won't move until I hear you speak. I'll fall down on my knees, desperate for you, God. Sing that again. I'll build an altar. And I'll build an altar here. Waiting for you, God. I won't move until I hear you speak. I'll fall down on my knees. Yes, I'm desperate for you, God. So come in.
Like the Lord, there is no one. No one. Because you Keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep. You're the light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Come on, just sing that to him. And you are way maker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, the light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep. You're the light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Just just stand in that for a moment, that very concept. God, the way maker. First he created, and then he sent his son so that we could be with him where he was, is. And then, and then he sent the Holy Spirit. So we could know him personally in the depths of our heart. Holy God, 
how could we but humble ourselves before you with such an attitude of thanksgiving, knowing that from the very beginning you have made a way. Doesn't matter what it is or what is to come, but we have the assurance from the Holy Spirit that lives within us that there is a way and you are the way and there is nothing that is above you. So you are eager to show us the way. <laughs> I think of when Jesus said, follow me. When Jesus, when you said, follow me, it wasn't just for the disciples and it wasn't just for them to be with you then. It's an invitation in everything and every way. And in your powerful name, Jesus, we say, amen. So we have a, want to take opportunity to pray for you. You know, what an awesome thing to know that we can come together and there are, and where two or more agree, there he is midst. So I've asked uh, some of our board members and their wives to stand in the aisles back here for those of you that can't find it difficult maybe to come down here. And I've asked for others to come here and be available. You know, there is no request too small. Or maybe it's not a particular request for healing or something that's going on. Maybe it's just something that you want agreement for, that you want God to make himself more real in your heart. But the awesome thing the word says, lift up the hands that hang down. So we have an opportunity. So we want to take some time this morning and be available for those of you that may want somebody to be in agreement with them. God of miracles I believe in you I believe in you the God of miracles yes I believe in you I believe in you the God of miracles, the God who was in it to come, the power of the risen one, yes, the God who brings the dead to life, you're the God of miracles. The God of miracles, the God who was and is to come, and the power of the risen one, the God who brings the dead to life, yes, you're the God of miracles. The God of miracles, the God who was and is to come. Yes, the power of the risen one. 
You're the God who brings the dead to life, the God of miracles, the God of miracles. Yes, I believe in you. I believe in you, the God of miracles. Yes, I believe in you. I believe in you, the God of miracles. The God who was and is to come. The power of the risen one And the God who brings the dead to life The God of miracles Yes, I believe in you I believe in you God of miracles, I believe in you, yes, I believe in you, you are the God of miracles, miracles, miracles. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Let's just thank him. Let's thank him for his presence. Thank him for his power. Thank him for his love. Thank him for his working in your life. Thank him for his ministry, his touch. Oh, Jesus, you're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we lift your name. There is no one like you. And it is our honor, Lord, to lift up and to magnify your name. And Lord, we are so thankful today. That, Lord, as we have come, as we have entered in with thanksgiving and praise, that, Lord, you have inhabited the praises of your people. You dwell in the midst, Lord, of that praise. And, Lord, we thank you for your presence. We invite you, Lord, today to change our lives. Speak to our hearts. Bring light to our path. Show us the way that we should go. And may our lives testify of your greatness, your power, and your love. May our lives bring forth fruit that glorifies your name. May our life bring forth fruit that, Lord, that goes to the world, that goes to this community, that goes to the nations. that speaks of your amazing love, your amazing grace, and your ability <laughs> to transform our lives. We thank you, Jesus. Just as we're in this presence this morning, If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what you sense right now in this room is the presence and the peace of God. And as you're in this room, you, you sense that draw, you sense that, that call. <laughs> There's something here that I need, and what you need is not a thing, it's a person. 
and his name is Jesus Christ. Whether you're here in this room or you're with us online, I want you to know that God loves you. In fact, God loves you so much that he gave his only son to come to this earth and to die a very painful death on the cross of Calvary in your place and in mine so that we could be set free from our sin, set free from our guilt, set free from our shame. There's not one of us in this room that, that have not sinned, have not made wrong choices, but God sent His Son so that we could not only be forgiven of those sins, but so that we could be free from those sins and we could walk in newness of life through Jesus. I want you to know today you can experience joy and peace in God by confessing your need for Jesus, for a Savior. By confessing your need, I need some life transformation. <laughs> I need hope. I need a future. I want you to know Jesus can give you all that. With your heads bowed this morning as a congregation, if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus and you would like to receive him, I'd love to just lead us in a prayer and you can repeat after me and just let it be your expression to God, just inviting him into your life. But if that's you this morning, would you just, would you just look up and would you just wave your hand at me? I just want to know who I'm leading in prayer this morning. But is there anyone here this morning who wants to accept Jesus? Wants to invite God to transform their life? Thank you, Jesus. 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 It's a congregation, and even you at home, would you just... Would you repeat this prayer? Just let this be your expression to the Lord. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, the one who created all, all that is, I call upon your great name and ask for forgiveness and cleansing from my sin. I look to you, O oh God, and I thank you for the gift, the gift of a Savior who paid the price for my sin that I could receive life, new life, even eternal life through Jesus Christ. I give my life to you. In Jesus, I invite you to be Lord of my life and lead me forward to know you more, to grow in you and experience life and life more abundantly. I thank you for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord praise this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to encourage you as we continue to worship this morning, just open your heart to the Lord. And for those of you that may have prayed that prayer this morning out over here on the wall in the lobby we have some Bibles that are free for you to take, some more information on how you can grow in Christ. And I would encourage you, whether through email or even here this morning through a Connect card you'd find in front of you, would you please let us know the decision that you've made? And we'd like to get you some more materials and just contact you and pray with you. God bless you. Pastor Johnny. Good morning. Yes? Good morning. Welcome so much on this very glorious and awesome Sunday uh, here on this campus and those online. If you haven't yet done it, we have a Facebook page 
And so if some of you have a smartphone, go ahead and pop it up, throw it out there, and look up Value Life Center in Dallas, Oregon. And go ahead and see as we're on, online right now. And there is a bell notification that's on there. And go ahead and hit that bell notification so you can get notifications where we go live, we do services. That way you're connected all the time. Um, amen. Amen. I got a few announcements, okay? Uh, if you don't catch uh, a couple of them, we have stuff on, on our website. Go ahead and go on the website if you need more information. The first one is this. is Summer Bash, okay? Summer Bash is this Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Yes, okay? Woo! Okay? And I'm really excited. Two things really excited for. One is this. If we raise money for uh, the kitchen, you're able to get a nice pie, okay? Hopefully it's, it's not hot, okay? But a nice pie and pie pass her in the face, okay? And so if you want to do that, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to put money into that too, okay? To put this pie in the face, right? <laughs> um, the unfortunate thing, Johnny, is that if they want a pie, they're going to have to bake it because I, I bought up all the pies in town. Oh, there you there go. There are no more. <laughs> so... <laughs> But make sure it's peach pie. So, yes. so a little clarification here. So, yes. so the focus is on Wednesday night when we come, the barbecue's free, all the yeah. activities free, everything's there. But if on Wednesday night, yes, if on Wednesday night <laughs> those that are in attendance can raise a thousand dollars towards the kitchen, okay, then I'll take the pie, okay, or pies, whatever. Well, let's let's stop right there. Um, ushers can come down and take an offering. No, no Wednesday <laughs> night. Wednesday night. <laughs> Um, yes, a lot of things, awesome things going on, and as well as too, uh, since I'm the youth pastor, I have a mic, and my se- the sound team hopefully won't mute me, okay? But uh, um, our our youth girls, there it is. <laughs> our our youth girls have been practicing like crazy, okay, uh, to do a dance routine, and so a certain part of Summer Bash is that they're going to showcase their dance routine. And so do me the privilege and honor to even just come and be a part of it and just really just cheer them on. It's really great, okay? Um, and then when is this? Um, start, this, this is not any announcements, but I can, I'm just going to say this. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, so um, after June 2nd, all right, the, uh, the youth group will go on a change of schedule, okay? We're not canceling youth group or none of that kind of stuff because we'll still be doing uh, online worship and online message. Um, but for your student who is uh, coming out of fifth grade to sixth grade or 11 to going to 12, okay, we're having events each week, okay, for them to connect. Um, really quickly, one of the events is uh, we're going to the coast, we're going to go on a hike, go a picnic. Um, all these um, uh, events are, are made so that your students can connect with their peers, okay? And then for the parents or guardians, it's your chance to get rid of them for a couple of hours, okay? All right? Um, and this is really awesome. This Sunday, everyone say this Sunday. For young adults, okay, at, starting at 5 p.m., right? Uh, young families. Um, and let me say this, you guys already, you guys already know this, you guys absolutely already know this, but, uh, Jesse and Nikki are a powerhouse, um, couple, they're great leaders, okay, and so if you're in that demographic of young families, go ahead and come out and see what they're about, because they're an awesome couple, they're a powerhouse, and plus two, El Pique is catering tacos, so if anything, come for the tacos, okay, yes, um, and then with that, dismiss the children. I'm going to dismiss the children. So all the mommies and daddies say amen and bring them to the children's church. <laughs> well, Johnny, I, uh, Pastor Johnny, I'm uh, sorry, but I, I noticed that you forgot something. Oh, okay. and, uh, and that is that on Wednesday night at the bash, I believe we have a dunk tank. Oh, yes. Right? And I, I think like the pastors are going to be in the dunk tank, Right. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so easy to mention the pie, but what about the dunk tank? <laughs> and let's see, what else can we line up for you, Johnny? No, I want to encourage you. Come, it's going to be a fun time. Barbecue hamburgers, hot dogs, and the stuff to go with it. 
And uh, wow, um, it's just going to, it's, boy, it's, it's a great, great time. We've got inflatables for the kids besides the playground. And it's a great opportunity to make some friends and just connect. And uh, if you're uh, good at eating watermelon, I think we have a watermelon eating contest and a bubble blowing, bubble gum blowing contest. And that's the group that comes in next Sunday and we don't recognize who they are because of all the stuff on their face. <laughs> it's good to be together, amen? amen? How many of you know we were created for fellowship with God, but we were also created for fellowship with one another? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, can I have the house lights up so I can see you? Yes, it may feel like there's a, quite a few announcements, but you know, when there's a lot of stuff happening, there's a lot of stuff to get communicated. You should be receiving your calendars this week in the mail, and uh, so and just letting you know about everything that is happening and going on, um, we have coming up in a couple weeks something that I wanted to make known to you. Uh, we have talked about the importance of getting out into the community. And I really believe that it, it is true. We as the church, God is calling us to, to get out of the four walls. We need to come together, right? We need to worship. We need to seek the presence of God. But we also need to go out and carry his presence into this community. And so in a couple weeks, uh, that weekend we have declared, I believe it's June 12th and 13th, as Acts of Kindness Weekend. And so on that weekend, on Saturday, we're going to have several things going. We've got a couple shifts. We're going to go like from 10 to noon and then from noon to 2. And uh, of those things that we're doing, our focus is to go out. And this is the easy part, right, for everybody, just to take our initial step to get comfortable with connecting in our community. We're going to go out and we're going to serve people. We're going to go out and we're going to bless people. And you ask, how are we going to do that? Well, the, a number of ways. Uh, first of all, <laughs> I have to write them down so I remember them. We're going to do a free car wash. Les Schwab's going to let us use their place down there. And we're just going to have signs out there. And people want to pull in and have their car wash. They can do it for free. We just want to bless them. We're going to bless them in Jesus' name. And again, just let God open up opportunities and uh, it's going to be a fun time together. There's a lot of you out there who can wash cars. In fact, there's some of you who need to come and wash other cars, but maybe we could wash yours at the same time. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we're going to have a fun time doing that. We're also going to set up in the park, and we're going to give out hot dogs and just bless people, and it'll be a Saturday, and people will be there, and we'll get some promotion out with that so people know what's happening, but we're going to bless them in that way. Some other things we're going to be doing, so we're going to send some people down to the laundromat, and we're going to pop quarters into those machines for people, or we're going to provide laundry detergent, or whatever it might be. Uh, we're going to have, we're working some things up with some of the coffee places, and, and we're just going to go and bless some people and buy them a coffee. And we're just going to engage the community. And then when we come back together, that'll all happen on Saturday. And then when we come back together, we're just going to celebrate on Sunday. We're just going to have fun and we're going to celebrate. And everybody can wear your You Are Worth It t-shirt. <laughs> oh, praise God. It's good. It's first step. We're, doing, we're putting together some food boxes that we're taking to deliver. We're going to go and deliver to some of the housing areas. And uh, there's some of you who say, well, man, I don't know if I could be out there washing cars. That's a little physical. If I can't be on my feet that long, well, maybe you wouldn't be a part of that group on Saturday morning that puts together those food boxes. And then there's others of you that may want to be drivers and be the ones who go and deliver those. I mean, there's all kinds of different things. There's a table right out here uh, with sign-up sheets. And uh, if, you're, if something looks like it's full, go ahead and put your name down anyways. Our hope is to have at least 50, 60 people that, are, that go out into the community and we just love on them in Jesus' name. How many think it sounds like a great idea? And the rest of you we won't ask, right? <laughs> Praise God. Would you take your Bibles this morning? Would you turn to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 5? 2 Chronicles chapter 5. I also want to encourage you, you want to help us with some of those expenses and different things. Laundry detergent costs a little bit of money, some coins that are in there. If you uh, want to mark your giving, you could do it online or you could do it here in the boxes on the wall and uh, just mark it acts of kindness or kindness and we'll know where it's going. Praise God. How many of you know we serve a generous God? 
How many of you know as people should represent that? We should be a generous people. And uh, that, is, that is good. Hey, as we start this morning, I, uh, I thought I would show you uh, just a couple uh, interesting slides that I discovered here in the last couple of weeks. And these are, these are signs or, or sayings that were on there. Can we bring those up? This one says, let's join hands together to make our hospital infection-free. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> At least I didn't get a boo. I usually get boos. Okay, let's go to the next one. Did you figure it out? <laughs> all the time and all the effort. Here's a sign that says, fit it itness. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they forgot to take the eye out when they put the, uh, the barbells there, or the handbells there. Uh, fitness center, I thought that was pretty funny. I, bet one of, I wonder how long it took them to figure that out. Okay, here's the next one. I think there's something they need to change with those trucks, right? <laughs> when the ramp is up, Sarah Lee doesn't like Sarah Lee. <laughs> I think Sarah Negas needs to get some counseling. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. That is fun. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for this moment we have together. And hmm. Lord, as we, as we just pause... We just invite, we, we thank you for your presence is here, but Lord, we just invite you to have your way in our lives. Lord, before we even, Lord, bring the word, we just pause and we say, have your way, Lord. Have your way. It is our desire that you would be honored, that you'd be lifted up, that you would be glorified, and that our lives would be changed. So we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the precious Holy Spirit. And again, we just invite you, Lord. We invite you, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. May your glory be seen, Lord, in all the world. In all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we come into our passage of Scripture this morning, I want to remind you of a couple of verses we read out of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Paul writes, now to him who is able to do so much more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever, amen, amen. Is it your prayer this morning that the temple of your heart would be filled with the glory of God? Is it your desire as a church that within our gathering we would be a habitation for the presence of the Lord, for the glory of God to be made manifest? Is that your thought? Is that your prayer? I want to remind us this morning as we continue from last week that the glory of the Lord is more than just a feeling. It's more than just an event. The glory of the Lord is a spiritual tsunami, as one author, author writes, a spiritual tsunami of the nature and the character of God being made known or manifest to his people. When we look at the word glory, we recognize that the word glory means heavy weight. Within that definition, it's, it's not just that it's heavy weight, but it's the heaviest. It is, again, the greatest, the biggest. Um, how many of you know there is no one like the Lord our God? How many of you know he's the most high God? When we talk about the glory of the Lord, when we talk about who he is, his character and his nature, we must understand there is no one like him. There's no one above him is even a better way for us to say that. When we talk about the glory of, the God, of God, oftentimes we will use phrases like the manifest presence of God, God making himself known. 
But along with that, as I said last week, when we talk about the glory of God, it's not just his manifest presence, but it's the recognition that when God is with us, when God is in us, when the weightiness of the glory of the God is among us, things happen. There is a power that is, that is exercised, a power that comes forth, that resurrects, that transforms, that changes, that delivers, that overcomes. You know, today in the world that we live, we can walk into a lot of different places and we can sense a lot of different atmospheres. I remember one time walking into a church in Alaska, in Valdez, Alaska, and I remember as I walked into that church, there was such a heaviness, there was such a, just a sense of, of bondage, there was such brokenness that was there, and I could just sense it in my spirit, I could sense it in the atmosphere. I was there with a youth group, and, and we were there to minister, we were on a short-term missions trip, and, and as we were there, it was interesting how the Lord moved upon different people's heart. I remember one young girl, the Lord just impressed upon her that she was supposed to just start walking around the church on the property and just praying for the body of believers. To make a long story <laughs> short, God moved in m many neat ways during that weekend. But there was so much we didn't understand in the physical and spiritual that was going on, but we could sense the atmosphere. As we were in that place and we ministered Sunday morning, we ministered under this sense of tremendous heaviness and brokenness, but no breakthrough. As we came together on Sunday night, I remember as a leadership team, other workers and uh, youth workers and different ones that were along with me, we were, I remember us just sensing we just needed to press in in worship and, and lift up and magnify the name of the Lord and just be sensitive to how the Holy Spirit would lead. And in that service on that Sunday evening, the atmosphere changed as the presence of the Lord was manifest and his power came upon that congregation. It was amazing as different ones in the congregation just begin to stand up and confess sin. People begin to reconcile with one another. People begin to set things right according to God's word and God's plan for their life. And as they did these things, the presence of the Lord was made manifest manifest and I mean it just turned into this sob fest and then it turned into this joy fest where people were just laughing and celebrating here was a church who was out in what we would call the bush they were moved into a building program for a new sanctuary these are things we learned about afterwards from the pastor and the associate pastor they were all at odds. The pastor had confessed in that meeting with the church that he just lost vision. He had lost direction. People began to get divided. They began to argue in the middle of this building program, as you could see potentially happening. People became divided against one another to where the building of the sanctuary, that was part of what we went to do, was to help with some of those physical things. It just had ceased because they couldn't come together and accomplish it. But there was such a breaking and such a power that was released that night. Things that the church had walked through that no one knew. They lived in an area where there was a large witch's coven. It all started with people coming onto the parking lot and trying to take their children before and after services. And then it came with all other different kinds of things that happened. But the worst part that led to an atmosphere that was discouraged, that was divided, an atmosphere where people were sorrowful, people were heavy hearted, was that they allowed the enemy to gain a foothold and to divide, to divide them against themselves. The atmosphere. You know what the atmosphere of when something is, is heavy. You know when you walk in, at, in an atmosphere of darkness, your spirit just, it, it speaks to you. You know it's just like, oh, something's not right here. Something's out of order. I want you to know, my friends, God wants you and I, he wants the temple of our hearts to be so filled with his glory that wherever we go, we carry the atmosphere of Jesus, the presence of Jesus with us, and it makes a difference. It impacts people's lives.
the atmosphere of God's glory. Oh, my friends, the atmosphere of God's glory, again, speaks of his weighty presence, but also speaks of our all-powerful God who can change anything in an instant, in a moment, as people would look to him and call upon his name. I have good news for you, my friends. And I've got good news for the city of Dallas. And you and I have good news for the nations of this world. We do not have to live in an atmosphere of discouragement. We don't have to live in an atmosphere of heaviness. You and I do not have to live in an atmosphere of confusion. You and I do not have to live in an atmosphere where we are in despair or sorrowful. I want you to know God is greater. And when his presence, when the glory of his presence abides within his people and is in the habitation of the church, I want you to know everything changes. Our lives change. The church is changed, and the world becomes changed. The glory of the Lord. Last week as we met, we, we started talking about what can we do? How do we, how do we participate in, in a desire of seeing the atmosphere changed in our homes, the atmosphere changed in the workplace, the atmosphere changed in the church, the atmosphere changed in this community? How can we cooperate? How can we bring invitation? How is it that we can invite the very presence of God to be made manifest in our life so that we experience and others experience that transformation. Just real briefly, last week as we met, we, we talked about spiritual hunger. We talked about that the scripture brings to us the focus of those that are hungry, those that are thirsty, they will be filled. Scripture gives us the focus of if we seek God with all of our heart, he shall be found by us, right? He shall reveal himself to us. If we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. There is something about when God's people, when people seek after the Lord, that they find themselves not disappointed. Spiritual hunger. We talked last week about humility. Humility, that God draws near to the humble heart. The humble heart. In 2 Chronicles 7.14, which is very familiar to many of us, We've, we've said this and we spoke this over our nation. We know it's, it's of importance to us. If my people, if my people who are called by my name will what? Humble themselves. Humble themselves. For the person, for the church, for the believer who is walking in humility, we recognize Jesus' rightful place as Lord of our lives. We recognize that we need him, that we are depending upon him, that everything we need for life and for godliness is found in him. What I love about this is he says, if my people who are called by my name will be first humble themselves, we have pray, right, turn from their wicked ways, it says, then I will hear. Humility, my friends, leads us to places of honor. Humility leads us to places, again, where we experience the presence and the power of God. When we are truly walking in humility, my friends, we will be appreciative of God's grace. We will be appreciative of his place, his position, and we will willingly surrender and submit and call upon him and trust him in all things, knowing that his ways are higher than our ways. Humility. We talked last week about honor. I know, I promise I'm going to bring you something new, right? This is catching everybody else up. We talked about honor, the importance of honor. If we want to welcome the manifest presence, the glory of God, if we want that atmosphere in our life, in our home, in the church, my friends, we need to be walking in honor first to the Lord, right? Scripture says, the Lord himself, 1 Samuel 2.30, those who honor me, I will honor. But it goes on from there. 
Our call in Scripture is what? Uh, we read in Romans 12, outdo one another in showing honor. We read in 1 Peter 2, honor everyone. We even read in Deuteronomy where it tells us to honor our father and mother. I want you to know when we live a life of honor, honor to the Lord and honor to one another, we are inviting the glory of God to be made manifest, the atmosphere of God's glory to be with us. Think about that in light of the church. A church where the people don't honor one another. A church where people don't honor those that God has put in places of authority over their life. Whether it be parents, <laughs> whether it be teachers, whether it be preachers, whether it be elders, every one of us, even those that we might consider lowly, are worthy of honor because God values all people. My friends, we were reminded last week that that which we honor or those that we honor will, we, again, <clears throat> will on, we will receive honor in that place. For instance, if you go into a place or you sit under a ministry, if you will honor the person that is there and presenting that ministry, the same anointing or Holy Spirit that is working through them, you will receive, there will be a blessing that comes forth on your life if you will honor. Husbands and wives, if you will honor one another, I promise you, you're going to experience a blessing from God that you would not experience otherwise. If you walk in dishonor, I want you to know your atmosphere is going to be one of lack, not one of prosperity, fruitfulness. We also talked about consecration. Man, I'm getting just excited about what I did last week in review, and as I've coming up. We talked about consecration. How many of you know that we've been called to a higher purpose? Yes. Praise the Lord. God has set us apart as holy. And we as a church need to recognize and to remember to purify ourselves, to be holy as he is holy because God has a sacred purpose for you and for me. And as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, if we want to experience the atmosphere of God's glory in and through our lives, in and through the church, the body as a whole, we must understand that we need to be consecrated. So what does that mean? Well, it has the picture of turning away from sin and turning unto God. We're in, our, our focus is not in the deeds of the flesh. It's in walking in the Spirit, right? How many of you know we've been given a commission? We've been called to take the good news of Jesus Christ to all the world. And I will tell you this, a church who is consecrated to the gospel of Jesus Christ, to what Jesus has done, and taking that out and sharing that with others, they will experience the atmosphere of the glory of God in and through their lives. Jesus even confirmed it in the Gospels. What did he say? He told us that we would go into all the world <laughs> and preach the Gospels. What did he say? Signs and wonders would accompany the preaching of the Gospel. Are we about... His business. Church, do we want to live in an atmosphere of God's glory? Then we must consecrate ourselves to the Lord. Now, let me just, we're going to pick up here and now move forward. In 2 Chronicles chapter 5, reading at verse 11. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who had, for all the priests who were present had sanctified or consecrated themselves without keeping on to their divisions. And the Levites who were the singers, all those of Asaph and Heman and Jedithan, 
with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed instruments and harps, and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voices with the trumpets and the cymbal and the instrument of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. That the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Oh, what an exciting passage of scripture. But note a few things with me. Just as we mentioned last week, the priest, what did they do? They consecrated themselves to God. That's what we read there in verse 11. They consecrated, they sanctified themselves. They purified their hearts before the Lord. They rededicated themselves to the purposes of God. I have been set apart. I have been set apart unto the Lord for his glory, for his work, for his will to come to pass. Before we go into the next couple points, and I promise you I, don't, I only have two more after this. I've got a question, and you don't need to answer this to me. Here's the question. Does the church today have need to rededicate itself? To re consecrate itself to the high calling of the Lord Jesus Christ? Have we allowed ourselves over time and, and with comfortability, with just culture and society, have we allowed ourselves to sell short the call that God has upon our lives? Have we forsaken the carrying of good news? Have we forsaken the sowing of seed into missionaries and ministries all across this world? Have we forsaken praying for our co-workers, for our unsaved family, for people that live across the street? Have we forgotten that there are people who are dying and they are on their way to hell, but you and I have that message that brings hope, that brings new life, that brings future? Isn't it amazing the effort, and I'm speaking to myself, the effort that I, that we will go to to hold on to our rights and our comforts and everything that's about our life here on this earth, but we so quickly release the call that God has placed upon our lives to be light, to share good news, to bring healing in Jesus' name, to be carriers of his peace, to be carriers of his joy, to be people who carry the very presence of God with us in such a significant way that even our entrance into an office with another brings conviction, not from anything that we said, but just because the presence, the weighty presence of the Lord is with us. You know, this morning in worship, what a beautiful presence in worship this morning. I want you to know that God wants to continue to bring increase. And that as you and I welcome 
as you and I invite, as you and I take advantage of these opportunities that we have to again prepare a place for the presence of God, I want you to know it'll get weightier and weightier. You heard me say last week, and I'm looking for those days, that will happen, but where people will come into this church or even drive by this church or the churches of Dallas, and there will be such conviction in their heart that they will come, they will ask, they will seek out. I want you to know, my friends, it happens. Sometimes we spend so much time trying to develop all of our different programs and all, and I'm not saying, those are good, those are good, but we try to do all these things to try to win people and catch their attention, but I'll tell you what, when the manifest presence of God is with us and flowing through our lives, the people will be drawn We, so tend, we tend so often to try to do it the hard way. So before I move to the next point, would you join with me this morning? And can we just in prayer, can we reconsecrate Valley Life Center can we rededicate Valley Life Center? Can we express to the Lord, God, we are here for you. We want what you want. We want to fulfill the call that you've placed upon our lives. God, we want to be aligned with you. We need your presence. We need your power. However, we want to express it. God, we say yes to you. Would you just right now, would you just, just bow your heads before the Lord, and would you just in your own way, would you just say yes to God? Yes, God, here I am. I am your child. Lord, I give myself to you once again. Father, we just, as a church, Lord, just uniformly, God, we, we, we would call out to you today. And Lord, we would say to you, we want what you want. Lord, it is your desire that the church would be triumphant. That Lord, we would walk through this community and this valley. That Lord, the presence of God that would be with us, Lord, would impact them in such a great way. Lord, that our testimony would be that of the New Testament church, Lord, the apostles. Is it said that they were going, they were going out sharing the good news. They were turning the world upside down. Lord, let that be said of Valley Life Center. And Lord, lead all the churches, God, of this community, Lord, to a place of, of devotion and consecration. That, Lord, we would give ourselves once again fully, not half-hearted, but fully to the purposes of our God that your name might be glorified. Lord, that the atmosphere of your glorious presence and your power would be made known. <laughs> In this community and around the world. Oh God, awaken our hearts. Forgive us, Lord, for getting sidetracked. Lord, we invite your presence and your glory to be made manifest in and through our lives. Lord, purify our, pur purify our hearts. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, just for any of us, Lord, where we've strayed or we've, we've made poor choices or we've given place to sin in our life, Lord, forgive us. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Well, that was so good, I could go home, but I'm not going to. Because I have two more things I feel like are really important that the Lord would have me to speak to us as a fellowship. And the next one is this. If you and I in our own lives, and even in our corporate gatherings. If you and I are going to carry, if we're going to experience the atmosphere of God's glory, we must be a people who welcome, who protect. We must be a people who are praying for and believing for unity in the church. 
We must be a people who are of one accord. We must be a people who are unified. As you look to the scripture, you'll notice in chapter 5 and verse 13, it begins to speak about the worshipers. And it says of the worshipers that they were one sound to the Lord. Some other translations, you'll read these words. They were as one. They were unified or in unison. How many of you know there is an incredible thing that happens in the presence and power of glory when the church is unified? What happens in the home when husband and wife and kids are not in one accord? There's confusion and there's hurt and there's pain and there's struggle and there's strife. The same thing happens, my friends, even within the body of Christ. We must be a people. Valley Life Center must be a church that seeks to protect the unity of the body. And I want you to know that is not just for Valley Life Center, but even for the church of Jesus in this community. What does it mean? What does it mean when we protect, again, the unity of believers? It means that we're quick to forgive It means that you and I choose to believe the best about other people. It means that you and I pray for the church and we pray for one another. It means that you and I refuse to listen to gossip. And let me tell you this, sometimes we don't realize this, but but, you know, we could be in our own church and it's like, well, yeah, that's my church. I'm going to protect my church. But something's happening down the street at some other church and we're quick to want to share that news all over the world. I remember one time being in a community, and there was a church that was going through a hard time. And man, there were people that were leaving left and right. And I remember being in a minister's meeting. This was another community, so I want you to know it wasn't here. And I remember being in a minister's meeting with other pastors, and I remember one pastor saying saying to a couple of us that were on the side about how excited he was to get some of the people that were leaving the other churches And I want you to know, my friends, if we're going to line up with Scripture, we need to weep with those that are weeping. We need to love on those that are struggling. We need to do everything that we can, again, to see the body of Christ unified. I want you to know, if there's one church in this community that's limping, we're all limping. We need to be praying for them. We need to be loving. We need to be serving them. We need to speak life into them. We need to be a people who protect. We need to be a people who are faithful. Faithful to the body of Christ. How is it, how can a church really truly be one if we don't relate with one another? If we don't truly care for one another? How can we really truly be a close and an intimate family if we forsake the assembling of ourselves together? Oh, my friends, if we desire to experience the weightiness of God's glory, we must understand that it is important to God that we would be one in Him. That doesn't mean that we necessarily always think the same way or agree on every little dot or cross or T. But my friends, it is the person of Jesus Christ that we unify around. And it is the person of the Holy Spirit who does that work within our body that enables us to love one another. Are we one in Christ? Do we desire to be one with the rest of the body of Christ? Do we protect the unity of the church? Let me just remind you of what we read in Psalm 133. I love this passage of Scripture. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity. Do you know what it says at the end of that passage? As it begins to talk about the oil and run down. It says, for there the Lord commands his blessing. Life forevermore. You want to experience God, there is a blessing that is available for those who are in unity. 
Unity with God. Unity with one another. My friends, I want to encourage us. I know. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I've seen it. I've had friends who have experienced it. I mean, let's, let's just, can we be real? How many of us here in this church have ever been hurt by somebody in the church? Oh, come on. People have been hurt by pastors. Pastors have been hurt by people. <laughs> Leadership, even people in the congregation. The truth is, wherever we live and whoever we interact with, there's always opportunity for offense. But we have the choice in whether we're going to be offended. Tell you what, church. If we will consecrate ourselves to the Lord, and if we will allow with the Holy Spirit a determination in our heart to protect the unity of the church, and in our hearts commit ourselves before the Lord, I'm going to do everything in my power with God's help. To see the church unified and moving forward. You know, it's kind of a sad thing. I read this last night. On, I believe it was on CBN News. There was an article. And it was talking about during this period of COVID that there were 3,000 new churches that were planted. But there were 4,500 churches that closed. You know, the greatest thing that I've observed and I've seen in this season that we're living in in our world is that all that has happened around about us, I truly believe with all of my heart, the enemy's purpose for us, the body of Christ, is to use this to divide us. And we hear stories. And we give place. Think about it, my friends. Think about all that's happening, I mean, and all the thoughts and all the opinions. If we let the enemy have any place in the church where it begins to disrupt our fellowship and begins to disrupt us fulfilling our purpose as God intended, if it divides us from one another, I want you to know we're not going to experience the manifest presence of God. We're not going to experience the glory of God as he intended. We've got to protect ourselves. And so with that, can I just ask this question to myself and to all of us? What is it that we need to lay down? What is it that you might be carrying that you need to lay down? And some of you may say, you know what, I've laid it down, Pastor, and I'm good. But you know what, there are some of you who may say that, but the reality is you're holding somebody else in bondage. You need to release that person that hurt you or offended you. And say, well, Pastor, what are you talking about? Can you imagine what would happen in this community, in this church, but in this community? I mean, you have to think about it, right? I mean... We know the potential. We know what happens in the natural and everything that goes around. But just think what would happen if the whole body of Christ in every church and all of us, that's why my heart is so much for us coming together as the body of Christ in one service down at the high school. I just, just love to see the whole church come together and be one in Him. But can you imagine if every offense every hurt, every pain, if everything was completely laid down and we just let the blood of Christ cover it, can you imagine what would happen to the church in this community? So I want to ask you to do something with me. Because I believe everybody in here, 
I believe your heart is, I believe your heart is, I want to live in the atmosphere of God's glory. I want to experience his manifest presence and power. I want to see my home, our community, our churches, I want to see them transformed. So what needs to be laid down? I want everybody to turn to somebody. Just listen to me, but turn to somebody. Your face, you may have to do a little bit of distance, but just connect eyes with somebody. I got two. For anybody in this room who has been offended with anything within the church, with pastors, with leaderships, or disappointment, whatever it might be. You know what I'm talking about. You've carried it. It's impacted you. It's affected you. I've known people who have said, I'll never serve in this place again, or I'll never do that again, or I'll whatever. That's not God's will. Let's lay it down. Let there be a clean slate. Let's move forward and experience the glory of God. Okay, sorry, got your way. Look at, look at people. Okay, you are now, okay, it's okay, we're going to switch it in a second. You are now the offenders. I want you to look at the person next to you and just say to them, I'm sorry for offending you. We're not done. I want you to look to the person there. I know they're not the person that offended you, but I want you to picture whoever or whatever it was. Would you look at them and would you also say, I forgive you in Jesus' name. I know that there's some who are in this room and you will say, I need that person to come to me. Let's look to the heart of the Father. I remember one time when I was in prayer and there was somebody that was upset with me. Some of you have heard this before. This is the short version. I really didn't understand what it was all about. But as I was in prayer before the Lord, the Lord said to me, is it more important that you're right or more important that you're reconciled? Yeah, that kind of shook me. God's called us to love and forgive in light of all that he's done for us. Church, be free. Be liberated from whatever it is that has you bound and keeps you from coming into unity with one another. Now, I'm going to answer. Sorry, I got to do this, and I'm sorry I'm going over here just a little bit. Are you still with me? Just a few minutes. This is so important. There are some of you, you've experienced abuse from someone. I'm not necessarily talking about physical abuse. But like for you, the fear is if I enter back into a relationship with such a person, they're going to take advantage of me again. We know there are those people in this world, right, where we have to establish boundaries. We can forgive, but that doesn't mean that we put ourselves back in a place for further hurt. To forgive someone does not mean that you become best friends. But I want you to know we can release one another. You know, God has given such a beautiful gift to us in the ability to write or even be able to send things on computer. There are some of you who just need to write a letter. And your final release that you're going to sense and feel is when you write that letter. Not a letter that lamb, you know. Not a letter that attacks, but a letter that loves. Just says, didn't even have to go into details. I know there's been struggles between us. And I just want you to know, I love you. I wish the best for you. I forgive you. Please forgive me for whatever part I've played in this. I just want to move forward from this point. Let it go. 
Because my friends, if we don't let it go, it robs us of the glory that he desires to be. Desires for us to experience. Okay, here's the last. We want to create an atmosphere. We want to live in the glory of his presence. What we see over and over again in scripture, in so many different places, scripture encourages us just to enter in with thanksgiving and praise. The scripture encourages us to magnify the Lord. The scripture encourages us to lift up his name. For God's people to magnify and to exalt the attributes of God. Now I'm going to say something that may seem a little silly to you or whatever else, but I think it's really interesting. You know, sometimes we have those songs we sing. It's like, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, right? I mean, there are other words to the song, but. You are holy, oh, so holy. You are holy, Lord of all. You know, there are certain songs where we begin to sing about the character and the nature of God, and as we begin to declare who He is and begin to worship Him, the presence of the Lord abides. The glory of His presence rests. Over the years, different people who have found themselves in an atmosphere of depression or just feeling overwhelmed, lacking peace, and again, these are people I'm typically closer with, but oftentimes when I've gotten together with them, what I've done is just got together with them and brought them into the presence of the Lord. Just come into a place like this or another place and turn on the worship music. Just start glorifying the name of the Lord. And you know what? It isn't very long where all of a sudden the presence of God comes. And the atmosphere changes. There's an old song that says, when the praises go up, the glory comes down. Church, think of when we come and we meet in gatherings like this, when we're at home in our personal devotional time, I want you to know there is no quicker way to enter in and experience the glory of His presence than by just lifting your voice in exaltation and praise to the glory of who He is. I remember when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit as a junior in high school. I was down at the altar crying, snotting, and whatever else, just seeking the Lord. But I remember in that moment, I was just worshiping the Lord, just praising the Lord, and, and just listing before Him His goodness and all that He is. And it was in the atmosphere of that worship that there was just that endowment. It was a life-changing moment for me. I remember after that, it was like every, everything changed it was just, it was amazing. There was an ability or a boldness to, to speak, to talk about Jesus. I remember being in a chalet restaurant in Salem. And I remember sitting there with a couple friends and they were talking about stuff. And I started, that's kind of when the, all the growth started getting preachy and, and saying different things. And I remember sharing with them. And then there was a couple that was at a booth across the way. And they got up and went to the restroom, and the couple came over and encouraged me. They sensed my zealousness, and, and uh, they were just like, keep on doing it. Encourage me in the Lord. Magnify the name of the Lord. The atmosphere will shift, it will change when we lift up and magnify the Lord. What significance does that have for us? I want you to know, my friends, the weightiness of the presence of God here in our gatherings, when we will come in and we will move past our own comforts, when we will move past how we feel, when we will move past the circumstances of the week, when we will come in and recognize that the highest call of our gathering is to lift up and magnify the name of the Lord, things will never be the same. You got a taste of it today. As we were in worship today, you sensed the presence. You just sensed the, the holy presence of the Lord. 
But I want you to know, my friends, there is so much more. There's so much more. We worship a weighty and a glorious God. Jess, if you come back up, we're going to get ready to close. I want to sing that song in a minute, Waymaker. Jesse was singing it earlier in the service. I want you to know this is really, really good news. You and I can live in the atmosphere of God's glory. And there are many different ways we see in Scripture where we experience His manifest presence and His power. But church, can I just encourage you, meditate this week. Give yourself, Lord, take time in your home. Take time just to worship the Lord. If you don't know where to start, maybe just turn on a you know, turn to Caleb or turn to some Christian music or Christian instrumental music or whatever else and, and just put it on and maybe just before the Lord, just start thanking Him for who He is. I remember the first time that I ever did this where I just began speaking back to God who He is. And I remember, you know, first it was like, okay, wow, can I think of more than five things? Uh, and I was like, oh, well, wait a second. Our God is so great and so glorious. Scripture says, who can fathom? Who can fully? I'll tell you what, you just begin to praise Him and to thank Him and just lift up His nature, His character. The presence of the Lord will be made manifest to you. Your home, the atmosphere of your home will change. The atmosphere of the workplace, I just love it. You know, there's some people, you know, those that are <clears throat> feeling convicted in heart may not love it, but, you know, you're whistling the tune as you're walking through the office or there's a song on your heart and you're just singing it as you go to the copy machine to make copies and you're rejoicing. You're inviting the presence of the Lord as you worship Him. Throughout the day, just little things that happen here or there, oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you that I wasn't in what could have been a horrible accident. Oh, Lord, thank you. Here's that paper I've been looking for for the last week. Church, if we will consecrate ourselves to the Lord, walk in humility before Him. If you and I will honor one another, if you and I will be united, allow ourselves to be united by the Spirit of God, if you and I will lift our voices with oneness, with unison, in one accord, I want you to know where God leads us, where God leads this church, it'll be like nothing we've experienced before. Oh, we may say glimpses, but I fully believe with all of my heart that in these latter days, that God wants to glorify His name in all the earth. Am I looking forward to Jesus' return? Absolutely. I'm looking for it. But I'm not sitting in my home looking for it. He's called us to be busy and to be about His business. We have a sacred call. Let's finish the work and go home. What a privileged people we are. Woo! Okay. We are. You are so awesome. The Lord loves each one of us individually. You are valuable to Him. Every single one. He has great things planned for your life no matter how young or how old you are. 
you are still here and while you have life and while you have breath, it is God's purpose to glorify his name through you. So would you just lift your hands to the Lord with me? Father, we, we call upon your great name this morning. Lord, we, we've consecrated ourselves to you. Lord, we recognize the importance, Lord, of being in one accord. And, and even now, Lord, just ask you to lead us, Lord. Forgive us for where we've harbored things, Lord, or we've allowed there to be division within the body of Christ. Forgive us for that, Lord Jesus. Lead us to a new day. Lead us in a new way, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that again there would be such a, a, a bond of fellowship, Lord, within this body. Lord, within the greater body, Lord, here in the Dallas area. I pray, Lord Jesus, that your glory would be made manifest in our lives, in our homes, in our jobs, Lord. Again, Lord, in the church and in the community. God, we don't want to be the same. We don't want to be the same. Lord, we don't want to just get by. But Lord, we want to fully experience who you are and all that you have purpose. So Lord, manifest your glory. Manifest your glory. And I've, just as Moses said, let's, George, just as his expression came, let us see. Let me see your glory. Let that be the heart cry of everyone in this room, Lord, everyone in this church, everyone in this community, Lord. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus, just as your disciples gathered that day in Acts chapter 1, waiting for the promise of the Father. Lord, may we commit ourselves to seek you, to honor you, to obey you, to honor one another. Lord, may our hearts become one in you that your purposes would prevail in and through our lives. To the glory of your name we pray. Would you stand together with me this morning? Waymaker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing it again. Oh, you are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Get this picture. Lord, drop this in my heart. In heaven, Scripture gives us the pictures. The angels are gathered around our great God and King. And they never stop crying out. Day and night, they're crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lord God Almighty. My friends, I want to encourage you. Don't become discouraged with repetition. It only brings greater emphasis. And as we continue to repeat ourselves, it works in our hearts and in our spirits to become a reality. As you're walking through this week, my friends, lift your voice. Declare it to the Lord. Waymaker, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You're just welcoming when you do that. 
You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. You're sitting down to pay bills and you're not sure what's going to happen and you sing. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You wake up not feeling so good, wonder if you're going to make it to work, and you sing, way make, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Your daughter's not talking to you, you know where she is and what she's doing, and you sing, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. You need full restoration in your marriage. He is the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. <laughs> okay, okay. Isn't God good? He's so good. I love you. Most importantly, the Lord loves you. Let's go change our world. Let's be carriers of the manifest presence of God. Amen. God bless you. Go with the song. Go with the song and glorify his name. Waymaker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes, you are. Waymaker, miracle work. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that